In curve sketching part three, I'm looking at polynomials that are already factored and are of a higher order than three. This is uh, order four. As you can see, x times x times x times x gives you x to the fourth. Now, when I'm drawing these, the first thing I do is look for the zeros. And when it's in factored form, it's very easy to see the x values that make y equal to zero. I've got these marked on the x-axis. Now, I always start from the right-hand side because whether it's an odd or even polynomial, um, if the leading term is positive, which this one is, it's x to the fourth, I know that my polynomial will end going up on the right-hand side. So I draw it from that side, crossing at the four, at the two, at the one, and at the negative three, and uh, since the paper already fell down, you can see that that's the, the shape that I get. It's uh, kind of a standard W shape for a fourth power uh, polynomial. Now, for the next one, you notice I've, I've got a 2 minus x here. Uh, what happens then is x times x times negative x times x is a negative x to the fourth for a leading term which is negative. If that leading term is negative, the polynomial will end going downward. Another way to check this is to pick a number to the right of 4, say 5, 6, 7, put it in here and see what this works out to. If you, for example, put in a 5, you'd have 8 times 6 times negative 3 times 1, which would give you a negative. So you end going down, and so I just trace it backwards, up through the 4, down through the 2, back up through the negative 1, and down through the negative 3. And that's what it looks like. It's an M shape, uh, an upside down, fourth power polynomial. Now, in this one, um, I have a square on this particular factor which means I don't cross at that value 2, I'm going to bounce there. So once again, I look at the x times x times x times x again because it's squared. This is actually a fifth power. The important thing about it though is that the leading term x to the fifth is positive, which again means I end going upward. Now the difference this time is I come down through the 4, bounce off at the 2, come back up through the negative 1, and down at negative 3. And that's what it would look like. See the bounce point at the 2 because it's a, a double root. If you want to know how high or how low these go, for, for example, if you want the y-intercept, uh, put a 0 in here and work this out. You'll be surprised at what a large number you get here. These are actually much more stretched out uh, than they appear here. Uh, for example, if I do put in a 0, I'll have 3 times 1 times 4, because that's, that's 2, negative 2 squared, times a negative 4, which will give me a large negative number. So you'll find if you want to draw these to scale, you're going to have to uh, make a very small scale along the y-axis. Now here's one more. I've got uh, actually one, two, three, four, five, six factors. So it's a, a sixth order polynomial. Uh, looking at the factors carefully, if you uh, pick a number bigger than six, you're going to find all these uh, factors are positive except for that one. Uh, meaning the leading term is, is negative it's going to end going down. This time I have two bounce points, and this is what it looks like. Up through the 6, bounce at the 3, bounce at the negative 1, and go down through the negative 4. And again, if you, uh, if you want to find where you're crossing the y-axis, just put a 0 in here. You're going to get a very large number because this, is, this will be a 9 times 6, we're already up at 54. So it's, it's very stretched out. 
and if you want to draw it accurately, you're going to have to be very careful with the scale on the y-axis.